Welcome back. In this section, we'll be looking at how we can add an API to our serverless service. Now, to do this, we're probably going to want to have something to do with the API. In this case, recording data and retrieving data from a backing data store. Now, that data store, in this case, will be DynamoDB. So let's get started adding a DynamoDB table to our application. But before we do, I want to point out that if you need to reference any of the code in this example or future sections of this course, you can go to the GitHub link provided inside of the description for this video. Now I'm going to clean up a lot of these extra comments inside of our application. And we're also going to scroll down to the provider section. In here, I'm going to add an IAM role statement in order to give us permissions to act on DynamoDB. I'm also going to set up an environment variable so we can reference the name of the DynamoDB table from within our serverless.yml file and other places, and also from within Lambda functions loading from the environment variables. So now that I've cleaned up a bunch of the comments that are left over in that default template from serverless YML, you should see that we have those three values inside of our service here, saying the app, the org, and the service name. The provider section that we had previously to specify the AWS provider and the runtime of Python 3.7. And then below, we also have the functions that we included earlier. In this case, just the hello function that's by default included for us. The plugins that we use to deploy the front end of our application and the custom configuration for that serverless Finch plugin. But now if we go back up here, we have a few lines of comments that we can uncomment and then start to include some more information about our application. Now in this case, I'm gonna start with the environment variable here. I'm gonna uncomment both of these lines and I'm gonna change this line here so that it's actually indented properly with two spaces instead of one. I'm gonna change this variable one to dynamodb underscore table. Now this will allow me to reference this dynamodb table variable name when I'm loading things from environment variables. Then I'm gonna go over here and change value one to serverless jams dash vote counts. Now this will be the name of my table that I reference in my application. Now with this table name as an environment variable, I'll be able to create both the table and the IAM role statements using this environment variable name in serverless.yml. The way I'll do this is by going down and uncommenting the IAM role statements here and then indenting them one space a little bit more for each of them so that they'll all be on the proper alignment for our YML file here. Now I'm going to start with the effect to allow permissions, and then I'm going to specify the actions that I'm allowing for this particular IAM role permission. Now in this case, I'm going to need three permissions, the scan permission, the update item permission, and the put item permission. Now each of these three permissions will allow me to interact with DynamoDB, and the proper formatting for these will be DynamoDB colon scan, and the exact same thing for the update item and put item operations. Next, I'll paste in what the ARN should look like for the service. It'll start with ARN colon AWS, another colon, and then reference the service name, in this case, DynamoDB. After that, it'll specify two stars here in between colons. The first one is referencing the region, and we could change this to something like US East 1, but because I don't want to specify just one region that this permission might apply to in case you deploy the service in multiple regions, I'll leave this as a star. And then the next star is applicable to the account ID for your service. So this might look like something like this, but because your service is in your particular account, I don't want to have just my account ID here, so I've left it as a star. Next up, there's the table, and the table is telling us what sort of resource this is. Finally, with the slash here, we're giving it the name of the table that we're interacting with inside of the DynamoDB service. So with all of this out of the way, this IAM role statement should be enough to give our functions inside of our service permissions to act on a DynamoDB table. So I'm going to save this, and then next we'll actually take a look at how we can create the DynamoDB resource. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom, and we're going to add a new section right below functions called resources. Now this resources section is going to allow us to create CloudFormation specific resources inside of the serverless.yml file. Now, inside of the CloudFormation resources section, there's two possibilities for what you include. You could either include a subsequent resources with a capital R section, or you could include an output section to help you manage CloudFormation outputs. Now, in this case, we're just creating one new resource of a DynamoDB table, and we're not working with outputs, so this is what the beginning of our resources section will look like. Underneath this, we'll name a new CloudFormation resource. I'm going to call this songs table. 
And inside of songs table, we'll define the characteristics of what this resource should look like. The first thing it'll have is a type. Now this type is gonna be the type of AWS resource. So we're gonna use AWS colon colon DynamoDB colon colon table. And this tells us that we're creating a DynamoDB table. On the next line, we'll start to specify the properties for the table. So I'll go ahead and paste those in here and we'll work from here. Now in the property section for a DynamoDB table, we start with a table name here. Now this section of code here is actually allowing us to refer to the provider environment and DynamoDB table information that's inside of our serverless.yml file. So it's essentially getting this value and replacing all the text you see here with that value. This way we can ensure that our DynamoDB table name, whatever it is, if we change it up in the environment variable configuration, will automatically be reflected inside of the table name part here. So if we deploy a table to multiple different stages later on, this will help us manage that if we have the stage name inside of the table name. And we could copy this text right here and actually apply it inside of the permissions for this resource as well. So that if in the long run we do something like this to separate out tables between stages, we don't have to worry about whether or not the permissions were updated successfully across those different stages. So with all these changes made, let's go on to the attribute definitions. These are gonna tell us what the primary key of our table looks like. In this case, I am defining a single attribute that's called song name, and I'm giving it an attribute type of a string. And then finally, I'm saying for the primary key schema, just use that same defined attribute as our primary key itself, in this case, the partition key. And because we don't have a sort key on this table, there'll only be a simple primary key using this attribute. Now, once we're done with this section, we can just add the provision throughput for our table. There's a lot of other options on how you might set up the capacity of your DynamoDB table, but because I'm being pretty cheap and I want to make sure that we're spending as little as possible on this example, I'm including provision throughput for read and write capacity units and just setting that to one so we don't have to worry about it getting too expensive. Now, if you wanted this to be a production application, I'd suggest either taking a look at how much capacity you might need with read and write capacity units, or switch to some of the other features of DynamoDB that handle scaling and automatic up and down capacity shifting for you. Now with all of this done, you should be able to just save this file and go back down to your command line, making sure that you're in the directory that contains the serverless.yml file, and then run serverless deploy. Then this command should take our serverless.yml and change it into a CloudFormation template that goes into AWS and deploys out our entire stack, including now the DynamoDB resource. So while this happens, we can go log into the AWS console and check if the DynamoDB resource has been created. So I'm over here and I've signed into the account that I'm using for this example, and I can go over to the DynamoDB section, and I have a ton of different tables in this account. But if I wanna find the particular one I'm looking for, I can use the name that we were using for this, which should be serverless jams without any spaces. And it doesn't look like it's been created yet, but if we go back over here and wait for the stack to finish creating, and then refresh the screen in our AWS account, we should see this table inside of our account. After waiting for just a moment, our service has been deployed and all of the resources for this service should be included inside of the AWS account now. So if I go back over to my AWS account and I refresh this page, you'll now see that we have this serverless jams dash vote counts table here and we could use it inside of our application. And we'll start doing that in the next video when we modify our function to start interacting with the table we've just created. So I'll see you there.